All right, thank you so much, Christy. Um, so for anyone um, just joining, welcome to the ARC and LTAC virtual training program, part two. This session is on section GG, self-care and functional mobility. Um, my name is Megan Bernier. I am a physical therapist with experience in direct patient care, compliance, clinical documentation, and provider education for ERF, LTAC, and home health providers. And I am the post-acute care clinical manager for Oasis Answers, Inc. Um, Ellen Strunk is also a physical therapist who works with Acumen LLC as a clinical lead. She supports Acumen with her clinical experience across the post-acute care setting, and her background also includes functional outcomes and quality measures. During today's presentation, we will summarize the data elements found in GG0130, self-care, and GG0170, mobility. We will also review some of the coding guidance for section GG and take time to apply knowledge of the coding instructions um, and the other coding principles that was acquired, that was acquired during part one um, in order to work through 12 practice scenarios. So let's begin by reviewing GG0100 prior functioning. So as discussed in part one um, for GG0100 prior functioning, um, which is asking us to identify the patient's ability to complete listed activities prior to the current illness exacerbation or injury, um, here we see four of the codes um, that are included with these items. So code three, independence, um, would be indicated if the patient completed all of the listed activities by themselves with or without an assisted device with no assistance from a helper. Code two, needed some help, is indicated if the patient needed a partial assistance from another person to complete any activities that's listed um, within one of the, the, the categories. And code one dependent um, is used if the helper completed all of the activities for the patient or the assistance of two or more helpers was required for the patient to complete the activities. And finally, we also have a code eight unknown, which is used if the patient's ability prior to the current illness, exacerbation or injury is unknown. Let's look at our first scenario. So our first scenario involves a patient that was admitted to an acute care hospital after experiencing a stroke. Prior to admission, they used a cane to walk from room to room. Each morning, the patient's caregiver would provide steadying assistance to the patient as they walked from room to room because of joint stiffness and severe arthritis pain. Occasionally, the patient required steadying assistance during the day when walking from room to room. So how would you code GG0100 prior functioning everyday activities for ambulation on admission? Would it be A, code three independent, B, code two needed some help, C, code one dependent, or D, code eight unknown? Please lock your answer in for the poll. All right, and it looks like 97% of you um, picked the correct answer, which is code two needed some help. And the rationale for coding the code two needed some help is that immediately prior to the patient's stroke, the patient needed some steadying assistance from their caregiver to complete the activity of walking in the home. As a reminder, the use of an assistive device does not impact the coding of GG0100 prior functioning. Our next scenarios include items found in GG0130, self-care. This scenario includes a video vignette. As you watch it, assess the patient's admission performance for GG0130A eating, which is defined as the ability to use suitable utensils to bring food and or liquid to the mouth and swallow food and or liquid once the meal is placed before the patient. Good morning, Ms. Baker. I see you have your breakfast. I have brought your thickener for your juice. Good morning, Mary, thank you. How did you sleep last night? Much better, thank you. Do you happen to know when I'll be starting therapy? Let me check. I think it starts tomorrow. I can call and double check it for you. Mm, mm, no, no need to. I'm not. <laughs> mm, mm. Are you okay? Mm, mm, mm. Let's mm. take a minute. Mm. 
Oh, my. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get used to the swallowing instructions the speech therapist gave me in the hospital, but I still find myself coughing and sometimes choking a little when I eat. Okay, let's talk about those. Tell me what you know about your swallowing instructions. Well, I'm not supposed to shovel a huge forkful of food into my mouth, and I shouldn't be talking when I'm chewing. That's rude, of course. And I should tuck my chin when I'm swallowing. Okay, that's right. Go ahead and continue eating. I'll be right here if you need help. Yes, that's right. Good job, Miss Baker. All right. So how would you code GG0130A eating for this patient? Would it be A, code 06, independence? B, code 05, setup or cleanup assistance? C, code 04, supervision or touching assistance? Or D, code 03, partial moderate assistance? Those answers are starting to come in through the poll. All right, and let's close out the poll. And it looks like 83% of you um, picked code uh, option C, code 04, supervision or touching assistance. Um, and that is the correct code. So great job, everyone. And code 04, supervision or touching assistance is the correct answer because due to the patient's swallowing precautions, the nurse assessed the patient um, required supervision while eating. Beyond the supervision, however, there was no physical support or instruction that was provided by the nurse to complete the eating activity. Our next scenario is for GG0130B, oral hygiene. Oral hygiene is defined as the ability to use suitable um, items to clean teeth. If dentures are applicable, then the item is defined as the ability to insert and remove dentures into and from the mouth and manage the denture soaking and rinsing with the use of equipment. In this scenario, the certified nursing assistant or CNA provides water and toothpaste to the patient to clean their dentures. The patient cleans their upper denture plate and then half of their lower denture plate. However, they then become tired and are unable to finish cleaning the lower denture plate. The CNA finishes cleaning the lower denture plate and the patient inserts the dentures in their mouth. How would you code GG0130B, oral hygiene? Would it be A, code 05, setup or cleanup assistance? B, code 04, supervision or touching assistance? C, code 03, partial moderate assistance? Or D, code 02, substantial maximal assistance? All right, and let's take a look at those results of the polling. And 85% of you picked the correct answer, which is um, C, code 03, partial moderate assistance. And the rationale for coding 03, partial moderate assistance, is that when you consider the totality of the activity, the helper provided less than half the effort to complete the activity of oral hygiene. Our next scenario for the self-care items is GG0130C, toileting hygiene. Toileting hygiene is defined as the ability to maintain perineal hygiene, adjust clothes before and after voiding or having a bowel movement. If the patient has an ostomy to manage, then we also consider their ability to wipe the opening, but not whether they can manage the equipment. In our scenario, the patient is morbidly obese and has a diagnosis of debility. The patient requests the use of a bedpan when voiding or having bowel movements and requires two CNAs to pull their pants and underwear down, as well as to mobilize onto and off the bedpan. The patient is unable to complete any of their perineal or perianal hygiene. Both CNAs help the patient pull up their underwear in pants. So how would you code GG0130C, toileting hygiene? 
Would it be A, code 04, supervision or touching assistance? B, code 03, partial moderate assistance? C, code 02, substantial maximal assistance? Or D, code 01, dependent? All right, and those answers are coming in fast and furious. All right, and let's close out the app and see how the poll and see how everyone did. Um, and 92% of you picked D, code 01 dependent, and that is the correct answer. So good job, everyone. And the reason for coding code 01 dependent here is due to the fact that the patient needed the assistance of the two CNAs to complete the activity of toileting hygiene. So let's review a few key points from these three scenarios that are key to correct coding. When assessing GG0130A eating, if a patient requires assistance such as supervision or cueing to swallow safely, then you code based on the type and amount of assistance that they required for feeding and safe swallowing. For GG0130B, oral hygiene, when a patient uses dentures, then we need to be sure to base the coding on the assistance needed to clean the patient's denture plate. And finally, for GG0130C, toileting hygiene, if a patient requires the assistance of two helpers to complete the toileting hygiene activity, then we're going to code the data elements with the code 01 dependent. We'll now turn our attention to the bed and transfer mobility items. And in this section, we have four different scenarios to consider. Our first scenario is rolling left and right, which is defined as the ability to roll from lying on the back to the left, to left and right side, and then return to lying on one's back on the bed. In this scenario, our patient is obese and has a history of sleep apnea. They recently fell and sustained a left shoulder contusion and is, and is experiencing pain. The patient reports they are more comfortable in bed with their head slightly elevated because it eases their feeling of shortness of breath, so they refuse to have the head of the bed moved to a flat position. Therefore, this assessing clinician determines that this slightly elevated position could be considered my, a lying position for this patient. With the head of the bed slightly elevated, a CNA assists the patient in rolling onto their right side by instructing them to bend their left leg while rolling to their right side. However, the patient needs physical assistance from the CNA to initiate their rolling to the right because of the pain in their left arm when grasping the right bed rail to assist in rolling. The patient then returns to lying on their back without assistance and uses their right arm to grasp the last left bed rail to slowly roll onto their left side, and then return to lying on their back. How would you code GG0170A, roll left and right? Would it be A, code 04, supervision or touching assistance, B, code 03, partial moderate assistance, C, code 02, substantial maximal assistance, or D, code 07, patient refuse? Go ahead and lock your answer in for the poll. All right, let's take a look at those results. So the correct answer is um, B, code 03, partial moderate assistance, and 82% of you guys picked that. So great job. So the rationale for this is that the CNA provided less than half the effort needed for the patient to complete the activity of rolling left and right. And based on the clinical judgment of the clinician, um, they determined that that slightly elevated position could be considered a lying position for the patient. So an activity not attempted code um, would not be indicated here because the activity was completed. Our next scenario involves a conversation between a nurse and a CNA. The nurse wants to determine a patient's score for GG0170C lying to sitting on the side of the bed. The nurse asks the CNA to describe how the patient moves themselves in bed and asks when they are in bed, how do they move from lying on their back to sitting up on the side of the bed? The CNA replies they can sit up by themselves. The nurse then asks a clarifying question. They sit up without any instruction or physical help and the CNA replies no. 
I have to remind them to check on the position of their arm that has limited movement and sensation as they move in the bed. But once I remind them to check their arm, they can do it themselves. After reflecting on the conversation, how would you code GG0170C lying to sitting on side of the bed? Would it be A, code 04, supervision or touching assistance? B, code 03, partial moderate assistance? C, code 02, substantial maximal assistance? Or D, code 01, dependent? Go ahead and lock your answer in. All right, let's take a look at the polling results. So 96% picked the correct answer of um, code A, code 04, supervision or touching assistance. And the rationale for selecting 04, um, supervision or touching assistance is because in the example, um, when the nurse inquired specifically about any instructions or physical assistance from the CNA when the patient moves from the lying to sitting position, the CNA described how they provided verbal instructions as the patient moves from lying to sitting to that sitting position on the side of the bed. Um, this is an example of how the assessing nurse clarified their own understanding of the patient's performance of the activity by asking probing questions to the CNA beginning with general questions and then proceeding to more specific ones. Our next scenario in this section is about GG0170 app toilet transfers. In our example, a clinician attempts to assess the patient's toilet transfer ability, but the patient states they do not need to void or have a bowel movement and does not want to demonstrate the activity. The clinician speaks to a CNA who cared for the patient earlier that morning. The CNA describes that they provided touching assistance as the patient lowered their underwear and then transferred onto the toilet. After voiding, the patient cleansed themselves and then stood up from the toilet as the CNA steadied them. The CNA also describes how the patient pulled up their underwear, but they continued to provide steadying assistance to ensure the patient did not lose their balance. So thinking about this conversation, how would you code GG0170F toilet transfer? Would it be A, code 07, patient refused, B, code 04, supervision or touching assistance, C, code 09, not applicable, or D, code 03, partial moderate assistance? All right, let's take a look at those polling results, and 88% of you picked um, B, code 04, supervision or touching assistance, and that is the correct response. Let's look at the rationale for that. Um, so even though the assessing nurse could not complete um, that toilet transfer with the patient themselves, they were able to get information from the CNA who provided enough information to allow the clinician conducting the ass assessment to code the patient's performance using the six-point scale. Therefore, an activity not attempted code was not necessary. Remember, an activity not attempted code should only be used after determining that the activity is not completed and the performance cannot be determined based on patient caregiver report, collaboration with other facility staff, or assessment of similar activities. Since the CNA reported that they provided steadying assistance as the patient transferred on and off the toilet, the item is coded as 04 supervision or touching assistance. As a reminder, for GG0170F toilet transfers, any assistance with managing clothing and cleansing is going to be coded under GG0130C and not considered when coding GG0170F toilet transfers. Our next scenario is for GG0170G car transfer. Here we have a patient who is leaving for a same day medical procedure. They use a wheelchair and ambulate for only short distances. The patient needs lifting assistance from the physical therapist to move from a seated position in the wheelchair to a standing position. The PT also provides trunk support while the patient takes several steps to turn and transfer into the car. The patient lowers themselves into the car seat with steadying assistance from the therapist. In order to lift their legs into the car, support from the PT is required. 
later, when the PT is reviewing the medical record, they determine that the demonstration of the patient's ability to transfer into the car is adequate to code GG0170G. So given this information, how would you code GG0170G car transfer? Would it be A, code 07, patient refused, B, code 09, not applicable, C, code 03, partial moderate assistance, or D, code 02, substantial maximal assistance? And take a few seconds and pick your response. Okay, and let's look at the answer here. So we have a close tie here between um, option C and D. Um, the correct answer is going to be D though, code 02, substantial maximal assistance. Um, so let's take, it, take a look at the rationale for that. So the patient only performed a car transfer into the car and the PT determined that this observation was adequate to code the item based on the type and amount of assistance required to complete that transfer. Although the patient also contributed some of the effort to complete the activity, the PT contributed more than half the effort needed to transfer the patient into the car by providing lifting assistance and trunk support. Therefore, D, code 02, substantial maximal assistance is selected. All right, let's review some key takeaways from these four scenarios. So for the bed mobility items, a clinician can use clinical judgment to determine that a slightly elevated position would be considered a lying position for the patient. The toilet transfer activity can be assessed and coded regardless of whether the patient needs to use a toilet or commode to void or have a bowel movement in conjunction with the toilet transfer assessment. And finally, clinicians may use clinical judgment to determine if observing a patient performing a portion of the car transfer activity allows the clinician to adequately assess the patient's ability to complete the car transfer activity. For the remaining scenarios, I will now hand the presentation over to Ellen. Thanks, Megan. In our next section, we're gonna look at two scenarios for the GG0170 walking items. In our first scenario, a patient with Parkinson's disease has recently been hospitalized for pneumonia. And when ambulating, they use a walker and a PT assist them. Another helper pushes the wheelchair closely behind in case the patient needs to rest. The PT must advance the walker for the patient with each step and also assist the patient by physically initiating the stepping movement forward by advancing the patient's foot during the activity of walking 10 feet. Before the patient can complete the 10 feet of distance though, the patient becomes fatigued and the helper, help, the helper assists the PT in transferring the patient into the wheelchair to rest. So to determine the correct code for GG0170I, a review of the medical record since admission to the facility is done. And it shows that the patient has not been able to ambulate more than six feet of distance with the assistance of two helpers. However, prior to this recent illness, the patient was able to ambulate 60 feet with contact guard assistance and a walker. So how would you code GG0170I walk 10 feet for this patient? Would it be 09 not applicable, code 88 not attempted due to medical condition or safety concerns, code 02 substantial or maximal assistance, or code 01 dependent? So go ahead and answer the poll. Okay, majority of you answered B, code 88, not attempted due to medical condition or safety concerns, which is the correct answer. Um, several people coded 01 dependent. So let's look at the rationale. The rationale for choosing 88, not attempted due to medical conditions or safety concerns, is because the patient was not able to complete ambulating the 10 feet of distance required for the item. If you recall, the documentation review reflected that the patient needed to sit and rest during the walking activity due to fatigue. Therefore, you would consider the patient unable to complete the walking activity. Given that the patient was able to complete the activity prior to the current illness, the scenario would be coded 88, not attempted due to medical conditions or safety concerns, rather than 09, not applicable. All right, let's go on um, to the next scenario. 
This involves a person who is ambulating on uneven surfaces for 10 feet. And we have another video to show this scene. Let's assess Ms. Carlson's admission performance for walking 10 feet on uneven surfaces to accurately code GG0170L. Ms. Carlson has been newly admitted and a nurse is completing the assessment of the section GG items. The nurse explains to Ms. Carlson the activity of walking 10 feet on an uneven surface. You see Ms. Carlson attempting to walk on an uneven surface. Ms. Carlson requires oxygen and the nurse assists by carrying her oxygen concentrator. Due to balance problems, Ms. Carlson also requires a walker and a gait belt. The nurse finds that Ms. Carlson is having difficulty maneuvering the walker over the uneven surface. In addition, she starts having trouble achieving enough foot clearance to complete the forward swing of her right foot and leg. The nurse assists by supporting Ms. Carlson's trunk with the gait belt and bearing minimal weight to help Ms. Carlson achieve the full forward swing of her right foot and leg. This assistance allows Ms. Carlson to safely complete the 10 feet of distance. There we go. Reflecting on the video that you just saw, how would you code um, the patient's performance for GG0170L walking 10 feet on uneven surfaces? Would it be 04, supervision or touching assistance? 03, partial or moderate assistance? Code O2, substantial or maximal assistance, or D, code O1, dependent. So go ahead and lock in your answer. All right, majority of people responded with the correct answer, which is O3, partial moderate assistance. So code B. Now the rationale for this is because in the video, because of her weakness, the patient required the nurse to provide less than half the effort in order to walk 10 feet on an even surface. So a few key points from these two scenarios. First, a walking activity cannot be completed without some level of patient participation that allows the patient ambulation to occur for the entire distance stated. In other words, a helper cannot complete a walking activity for a patient. During a walking activity, a patient may take a brief resting, a brief standing rest break. However, if they need to sit to rest during a walking activity, then consider the patient unable to complete that walking activity and then choose the appropriate activity not attempted code. Our next two scenarios look at mobility on the stairs and picking up an object. So scenario 11, GG0170N, up and down four steps. In our scenario, the patient has lower body weakness. They use a cane when going up and down the steps. A physical therapist provides studying assistance when the patient ascends four steps. After climbing the four steps, the patient asks to take a rest and takes a brief sitting break before descending the four steps. While descending the four steps, the PT provides trunk support. That is more than just touching assistance as the patient holds the stair railing and the cane. So how would you code GGO170N four steps for the patient? Would it be A, 09, not applicable, or B, 88, not attempted due to medical condition or safety concerns, C, 03, partial moderate assistance, D, O2, substantial max assist. Go ahead and lock in your response. All right, responses are coming in. Great, all right. Majority of you, 69% chose the correct answer, which is O3, partial moderate assistance. Some of you, however, did choose 88, not attempted due to medical condition or safety. So let's look at why we chose O3. Is the correct answer because the patient provides touching assistance as the patient ascends four steps. But as the patient descends the four steps, the PT provides more than touching assistance. The patient needs trunk support. Remember that patients are allowed to take either a standing or sitting rest break between ascending and descending stairs. Now let's look at GG0170P, picking up an object. 
As you watch the video, assess the patient's performance for picking up an object in order to accurately assess GG0170P. Let's assess Ms. K's admission performance for picking up an object in order to accurately code GG0170P. I have been looking forward to this all day. I didn't know there was going to be bingo. I'm glad we came early to get a good spot. Oh, well, that was clumsy. Let me use my reacher to get it. Okay, I can help if you need it. Well, this used to happen all the time. Glad I have this reacher. Oh! Oh. Oh, I guess I'm not as steady as I used to be. I can help steady you. Oh, anything to keep me from toppling over. Thanks for your help. No problem. These are the types of things we want to be able to see you do safely. Agreed. Now, on to bingo. Wish me luck. Good luck, Miss Kay. So how would you code the patient's performance for GGO and 70P picking up an object? Would it be A, 04, which is supervision or touching assistance? B, code 03, partial or moderate assistance? C, code 02, substantial maximal assistance, or D, 01, dependent. Poll is open. Get your response in. All right, we have a close tie on this one. The correct answer for GGO and 70P, picking up an object is 03, partial moderate assistance. A good number of you chose supervision, however. So let's look at our rationale for why um, the partial moderate assistance is, is the best, better answer. And that's because the patient required the nurse to provide less than half of the effort as the patient reached to pick up an object from the floor. So she did need to provide some assistance to her and keep her from toppling over, as the patient said. So a few key insights um, for going up and down stairs and steps and picking up an object is that when you are assessing GG0170N four steps and GG0170O 12 steps, if going up and down the stairs occurs sequentially, then the patient can take a standing or seated rest break between ascending and descending the four steps or 12 steps. And for GG0170P, picking up an object, a patient can use an assistive device and adaptive equipment to assist them in, in picking up the object. For example, a patient may use a cane to support their standing balance and or a reacher, as Ms. K did, to pick up the object. The point is that we want to allow the patient to perform the activity as independently as possible while remaining safe. So let's move on to GG0170 wheelchair and scooter items. The wheelchair mobility items capture a couple of additional pieces. First, does the patient use a wheelchair or scooter? And second, can the patient perform the activity? And then third, what type of wheelchair or scooter is used? So as you read the next scenario, think about these things. Does the patient use a wheelchair and or scooter? Can the patient wheel 50 feet with two turns? What type of wheelchair or scooter is used? Can the patient wheel 150 feet? And then what type of wheelchair or scooter is used for that distance? So the patient in our scenario is unable to ambulate prior to admission secondary to a spinal cord injury. At baseline, they use a motorized wheelchair for mobility. They are able to navigate their motorized wheelchair to and from the therapy department for a distance of 150 feet and do not require assistance or verbal cueing to complete this task. Currently, however, the patient is trialing the use of a manual wheelchair during therapy sessions. The patient can propel the wheelchair 60 feet in a straight line before they need the assistance of a helper to mobilize longer distances. The patient is also able to complete two turns with the wheelchair. However, they do require verbal cueing and hand over hand assistance to provide wheelchair propulsion and coordination as they make their two turns. So, how would you code GG0170Q1? Does the patient use a wheelchair and or a scooter? 
would you code zero no or one yes? Everybody lock in their answer. One's moving fairly quickly on this one. And great. Just about everyone answered correctly. The correct answer is one yes. And we chose one yes because the patient uses both a motorized wheelchair for mobility and is trialing the use of a manual wheelchair. So the intent of GG0170 wheelchair mobility items is just to assess the ability of the patients who are using wheelchair under any condition. Now, moving on to the next question, thinking back on the same scenario, how would you code GG0170R wheel 50 feet two turns for this patient? Would it be 06 independent, 05 set up or clean up assistance, 04 supervision or touching assistance, or 03 partial or moderate assistance? So poll is open. Everyone put in the best answer. All right, we've got our answers locked in. About 60% of people got the correct answer, which is 03 partial moderate assistance. Several people chose another response. So let's look at why 03 partial moderate assistance is the best answer. And that's because the patient is independent with the use of the motorized wheelchair, but requires some help with the two terms when using the manual wheelchair. Since the patient's use of the manual wheelchair requires more assistance, then you would code the patient's performance based on the use of the manual wheelchair. The patient was able to propel themselves the 50 feet of distance, but a helper was needed to provide verbal cueing and hand over hand assistance with propelling and coordinating the wheelchair when making those turns. Therefore, since the assistance occurred throughout the 50 feet of distance, then it would be considered partial or moderate assistance. All right, our next question, how would you code GG0170RR for the type of wheelchair or scooter used by the patient? Is it one manual or two motorized? All right, we have the majority of answers in and the correct code is one manual. We chose that one because um, the patient uses both motorized and manual. They're independent with the use of the motorized, but require some help with the two turns when using the manual wheelchair. Since the patient's use of the manual wheelchair requires more assistance, then you would code one manual wheelchair for this item. What about GG0170S, wheel 150 feet for this patient? Would you code it A, 04, supervision or touching, B, 03, partial or moderate assistance, C, 02, substantial or maximal assistance, or D, 01, dependent? So go ahead, the poll is open. Go ahead and lock in your response. All right, we have the majority of respondents did give the correct answer, which is O2, substantial or maximal assistance. And the reason that is the best answer is because since the patient's use of the manual wheelchair requires more assistance, then you would code the patient's performance based on the use of that manual wheelchair. And the patient can propel the manual wheelchair only 60 feet in a straight line before they need the assistance of a helper. Therefore, to mobilize a longer distance, the assistance of the helper is required for more than half of the effort to complete the activity. And then finally, how would you code GG0170SS for the type of wheelchair or scooter used for this patient? Would it be one manual or two motorized? All right, looking good there. Majority of respondents got the correct answer, which is one manual. And as with item GG0170RR, item GG0170SS identifies the type of wheelchair or scooter used to wheel the 150 feet. The patient uses both a motorized and a manual wheelchair, as we said before. While they're independent with the use of the motorized, 
they do require assistance to complete the 150 feet of distance when using the manual. And since the patient's use of the manual wheelchair requires more assistance, you are going to code one manual to indicate the type of wheelchair used for this activity. So let's look at a few key points. The, um, the, the first is that clinicians can use clinical judgment to determine how the actual patient assessment of wheelchair mobility is conducted. If a clinician chooses to combine the assessment of multiple wheelchair items, they can, or wheelchair activities, they can. When that occurs, they may use clinical judgment to determine the type and amount of assistance needed for each of the individual activities. Second, if a patient uses both a manual and motorized wheelchair or scooter at the time of the assessment, then the activity is coded based on the type of wheelchair or scooter which the patient used that required the most assistance. The third insight is with all of the GG mobility, self-care and mobility items, a clinician can clarify their own understanding of the patient's performance of the activity by asking probing questions, beginning with general and proceeding to the more specific. Fourth, the use of an activity not attempted code should occur only after determining that the activity is not completed and the performance code cannot be determined based on patient caregiver report, collaboration with other facility staff, or assessment of similar activities. And finally, activities may be completed with or without an assistive device. And this includes the use of any new or previously utilized assisted devices or equipment. It is possible that the use of a device or equipment may result in the patient needing less assistance from a helper. So that concludes our presentation for this afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the session on GGO 130 self-care and GGO 170 mobility.